Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. It's Shorty with Table Syrup. In today's video, I'm going to explain working with plugins in racks and assigning rack inputs and outputs in multi-rack sound grid. So to get started, we'll just click add a rack. On Windows, we can use Control R. On Mac, we can use Command R. From within the add a rack window, we'll see that we can add a number of racks, uh, the configuration of rack, and we can also add multiple configurations of racks simultaneously. We have mono, stereo, and various configurations of surround. And then we'll just click OK. Once we've instantiated racks, we'll see our input and output assignments on the left and right hand sides. And once we have racks instantiated, we can start adding plugins. So to do that, we'll just click the little plus sign in a rack. We can add up to eight plugins per rack. We'll just choose from a category and a plugin. Let's just instantiate a C6 multiband compressor. Now on each of the plugins, you'll see an indicator. Right now, it's indicating no source, no signal. Uh, if we did have a signal, it would indicate green. And if we saw a peak, it would indicate red. If we double click on the plugin, we'll get access to the graphical user interface. You can just start from a preset in the wave system toolbar. We would just go to load. Uh, we just pick a category and a preset. Uh, shout outs to Pooch. We'll just grab his vocal preset. Now say we wanted to add another plug. Let's say that I was looking to get out some noise. Uh, use the primary source expander. And we just set a threshold and the gain reduction. Awesome plug, by the way. You should be using this on like every single channel. We can drag and drop plugins. So say I wanted this in front of my C6, I could just drag and drop the plugin and reorder. Now let's say I want to add some EQ after just in case. Uh, maybe I just want to be able to knock some stuff down on the go as things are changing, things are moving around on stage. Now, once we've created a plugin chain, uh, say I want to take this chain and save it. Uh, so I've got this preset for our other shows for additional channels. We can go to save in the waves system toolbar in the rack. Uh, we can save it to a new file. We can copy the preset or we can put it into the preset menu as. Now, if we put it in the preset menu, we're saving it on the machine. Nothing wrong with that. What I like to do is save it to a new file. So in this case, let's just go from scratch. Uh, we're going to make a new folder. We're going to call it multi-rack sound grid presets. Uh, I like to keep my stuff organized. So let's make categories. Let's call this vocal one or vocals. I'm sorry. And let's take the preset and we'll name this rack preset vocal one. All right. So now we've saved this plugin chain as a preset. So I can come to any other rack and I can load. Now, if I put this in the, in the preset menu, it would just show up in here. Uh, I try to avoid doing that. I usually put them on my thumb drive uh, and I keep my presets going and I have my own library presets. So what I'll do is I'll go to open preset file and we can just navigate to wherever it is. It'll default to our last location, but we can navigate through and there's our preset and bam, same thing that we had, we just saved it. Uh, one of the cool things about this is the XPS file format opens in any of the sound grid applications, any of the waves applications. So I can take this rack and I can open this rack preset in Studio Rack in a Pro Tools session, or I can open up this rack in SoundGrid Studio, uh, and vice versa. I can take Studio Rack presets from a session and open them up into my multi rack sound grid rack for a live show. For me, this is particularly useful because I work back and forth between studio and live a lot. This is something that I do. Uh, it's going to save you guys a lot of time if you work with saving and categorizing your presets. Another thing we can do is we can copy a rack or we can duplicate a rack. And bang, it duplicated another rack for us. We can remove a rack, just right click, delete rack. Plugins, we can delete by simply dragging them off of the rack. Another thing we can do is we can bypass a plugin by simply taking the plugin in or out. So the plugin is still instantiated. It's just being bypassed right now because it's not engaged. Uh, we can do the same thing with the entire rack. 
by turning the entire rack on or off. Uh, another thing that we can do is we can disable a plugin. Now the cool thing about this is we can have plugins in a rack that we may or may not be using. We're not sure if we're gonna use it yet. Uh, if that's the case, we can disable the plugin, which removes it from the DSP engine. So we're not eating resources right now because it's disabled. Uh, if we decide we do wanna use it, then we just enable the plugin and it's back in the system, it's active. And that's it for today's video. In the next episode, I'll explain running multi-rack in a show using snapshots, MIDI control, and the hot plugins feature. Thanks for watching.